All right, these are five techniques that I'm using in my motion graphics all the time. Let's check them out. You can make a wheel rig with a very simple constraint system. First, add your empty and then parent the wheel to that empty. Then head to the constraints and add a transform constraint and choose the empty as the target. Choose local space and on the Y max, do pi times the diameter of your object. You can see that in the settings there. Go to max two and change that to rotation and change the X source axis to Y and then add negative 360 to that max and now your wheel is going to roll. It's very easy to make a really cool geometry nodes growth effect. Let me show you how to do it. Add a plane and subdivide that plane. Then add a instance on points and connect your particle to the instance on points node. Then you can get a color ramp and add a noise texture to that color ramp to create that growth system. Then you can edit the color ramp to get your colors right and the color ramp will allow you to animate in and out that growth effect. You can also get a random value to kind of play with those objects like that. And then you can get the W on the noise texture to also animate some of the particles as well. And with this whole system, you can create a really cool looking growth effect. For anybody watching this specific video, I'm giving you guys a 25% discount on real-time materials. Use the code DuckyFi at checkout to get 25% off real-time materials. If you don't know what real-time materials is, is a add-on full of a bunch of really high quality procedural materials made to speed up your workflow and just give you very good quality materials. It has things like wood, carbon fiber, cloth, terrazzo, even more on the basic essential side of materials, just tons of really cool things. And I'm adding some really cool materials like wood and some steel and cement uh, in the next update and all updates are free. So you can check that out linked in the description. Use the code Ducky5 at checkout. If you like making looping animations, let me show you how to loop the weight paint. Add your canvas and make it displace. At least in my case, I'm gonna use displace for this. And then add your brush. Now my animation is gonna be 120 frames long. Figure out your number, how long you want that specifically here rotation to be. And then now that you have your frame range decided, for me, 120, triple it. Now, instead of doing one rotation across 120 frames, we're gonna do three rotations across 360 frames. Now, go ahead and bake that animation. Now, here's the trick to make the weight paint displacement loop. Start your animation at 120 frames, so there's gonna be 120 frames of that weight paint already moving, so you have that motion start it, then end it at 240. So now you're just gonna have specified 120 frames, then now it's a loop. A little bit of mental math here, but it works out really well to make looping animations with weight paint. You can make anything animate as a rotation on its corners with this really simple trick. Go ahead and add an empty to each one of the corners of your object. Try to figure those out. For me, I'm just gonna use kind of a square object here. Then go ahead and stack all of the parents. So the fourth one, parent it to the object. The third one, parent it to the fourth. The second one, parent to the third, just in that stack. That way to where the last, the last empty, empty number one is parented and controlling everything. Then you can go ahead and animate each individual empty at a 90 degree, and you're gonna have a object rotating on its corners. It can be kind of weird. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but this is sort of the simplest one without a bunch of math and constraints and all that craziness. I love this one for more graphic design implementations. You can make a really cool looking melted text effect. Go ahead and compose your text and convert it to a mesh. Then go ahead and hit Control J to join all of them together and then go and add a remesh modifier to that object. You can also add a smooth modifier to kind of fix some of those edges if you don't like it. I kind of like the effect though. And with the way that these letters are positioned, you can add an area light above it and it creates a really cool shadow effect add a material and you have a really cool looking text that you can go ahead and throw on whatever project you're working in. There you go, those are five things that I'm doing all the time in my own personal work and client work and they work out really good and they look awesome. If you wanna see me talk more about a lot of these techniques, there's so many more I can add and make more videos about this, so let me know in the comments. If you wanna grab that 25% off, you can get that. Use the code Ducky5 at checkout and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.